So I'd like to welcome everyone to Lynn Tech, um, an incredible high school. Our principal, Mr. Fred Gallo, is here with us um, this afternoon, as well as some district staff. We have all three deputies, uh, Maricel Gores, who's our deputy over secondary schools. Um, and then we have Deputy Molly Cohen and Deputy Deb Ruggiero, they're both the elementaries but all sorts of other operational issues um, so thank you we have our life skills students in the back thank you for being here and for being such an example and model to all of our students in our community and thank you for all the guests that have joined us today um, specifically uh, Commissioner Russell Johnston Dr. Patrick Tutwiler our secretary um, and our mayor of course uh, who will be our next speaker uh, Mayor Jared Nicholson. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the city of Lynn, I'd like to welcome everybody and also say happy STEM week. It is a particular uh, honor and, and thrill to be able to welcome back our former superintendent and the secretary of education. Welcome back. Thank Dr. you. Dr. And also honored to have our, uh, the current acting commissioner uh, and someone who we're, we're really enjoying working with in his new role, Russell Johnson. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So there's a, a lot of great work happening in this building, and I think it's it's part of a, a, a broader story that is really a transformation in, in how people think about vocational education, technical education, uh, and you're seeing some of that in, in the grant that we're uh, receiving and announcing, so thank you so much um, to, the, to the, the state for those resources. And I think what is particularly exciting about the way that story is being written in Lynn is the reality of, of expansion. So seeing a form of education uh, that has really been radically transformed in how it's perceived and as a result uh, just received so much interest and an ability for, for, for us as a community to, to take that, to harness it, and to, to, to grow as a result, to, to see the, the students raising their hands, saying they're interested in this form of education and be able to make that a reality for more and more students each year is, is truly exciting. And it's a result of the, the great work that the, the faculty and staff have done here at Lynn Tech to make this school come alive, the leadership of, of Principal Gallo, the work of all the students. I see the, the Skills USA team here uh, representing the, the incredible student body uh, that, that Make make see people see that and want to become a part of it, um, and so it's just as much a, a testament to the to the hard work of the students as well as our, our administration and thinking about how to to move things around and create those possibilities for expansion. Um, to the, the teams that put together these grants applications to allow for the growth, and then ultimately our friends at the at the. Uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education who, who believe in us and believe in our students and see this possibility for, for expansion. It ties perfectly into the, the, the STEM week, so we're honored to have the secretary here uh, to, to highlight and drive home the importance of those disciplines, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, and just to, to, see, to see those subjects become actual employable skills for the students in these in these programs, the kind of the end of a STEM journey uh, that our students are taking in, a, in our pre-K through 12 uh, system, but also the beginning of their employment journey, where they'll hopefully bring those STEM schools with them throughout their lives and help provide for them and their families, and and ultimately in, enrich our entire world with the knowledge that they're developing right here in in the classrooms and shops and placements here at, at, at Lynn Tech. So it's an honor to, to work with all of you. And on uh, behalf of the city, I just want to say congratulations. So as we celebrate STEM week, uh, we just, we, we really want to highlight that we understand that STEM helps students bridge skill gaps um, from pre-K to 12. Here in Lynn, we have started um, you know, really focusing on our pre-K students, even coding with B-Bots, and you can catch them doing that at Bennett Street now. 
Um, we have a pre-K on the first floor of right underneath <laughs> your old office, Dr. Tutwiler. Uh, and so really having those combined academic knowledge and technical skills, right, is really what STEM is all about. And our innovation team, um, along with our secondary uh, group of leaders, is really focusing on how do we extend STEM experiences from uh, that pre-K to 12. I want to introduce um, two students at this time that will, it gives me great pleasure to bring up the first student, Andy Barrios, to speak. Andy. Good afternoon, teachers, fellow students, and honorable guests. My name is Andy Barrios, and I am a senior in the Advanced Manufacturing Program and president of Lintex QUSA chapter. I'm so excited to talk to, you all, talk to all of you today about why CTE, or Career and Technical Education, is so important to me, and more importantly, why it's so essential for our community. When people think of high school, most imagine textbooks, lectures, and exams, but not all learning happens in the classroom, and that's where CTE comes in. CT is hands-on practical education that gives students like me the chance to develop real-world skills in industries like manufacturing, healthcare, IT, construction, culinary arts, and more. For me personally, CT has been a game changer. I've always had an interest in advanced manufacturing, but I wasn't sure how I can turn this passion into a career. Through CTE and Lintech, I've been able to gain real skills work on actual projects that have not only prepared me for the workforce, but have also provided me with an opportunity to step into the workforce through the Cooperative Education Program. I've learned not just through textbooks, but through industry professionals that know what it's like to be in the field. And this has given me a sense of direction and confidence in my future. CTE has also taught me the value of hard work, teamwork, and perseverance. It's one thing to read about a skill, but it's something entirely different when you do it yourself. Whether it's CNC milling, preparing a meal, or designing a website. CTE gives us a chance to learn by doing. And that hands-on experience is not something you can just get by sitting in the classroom. But CTE isn't just about helping students like me. It's about helping the community. When a student graduates from a CTE program, they are ready to enter the workforce, often with certifications that employers are looking for. This means more skilled workers in our local economy and more young people to contribute to the growth and new growth and success of our community. This is something I facilitate and foster here at Lintech, especially in my role as chapter president of Skills USA. We all know that some industries have been facing shortages of qualified workers, whether it's healthcare, skilled trades, or technology. Businesses need people who know what they're doing. <laughs> Sorry. CTE helps bridge that gap by providing students with the skills they need to fill in those roles. When we succeed, our community succeeds. Career and technical education gives students options. Not everyone is gonna follow the same path after high school, and that's okay. Some may go to college, others straight into their career. And CTE recognizes that and provides different pathways for students to reach their goals. Whether it's becoming a nurse, an electrician, a chef, or a CNC machinist. I'd just like to end off by saying CTE isn't just an alternative to traditional education. It's an essential part of preparing the next generation for the real world. It offers a different type of learning, one that's rooted to prepared practical experience and direct application. And for students like me, that's invaluable. CTE should become the norm in education everywhere. In closing, CTE is, isn't just about jobs. It's about opportunity, growth, and the future of our community. 
Thank you. And our next student speaker, Anais Romero de, Les, de Ledesma, if you could come up. Hello, my name is Anais Romero de Ledesma, and I'm going to be speaking about the benefits and all the things I have gained from precision machining. I do the After Dark program after school, which helps me be become a precision machinist. It teaches me many things, um, for example, hands-on learning, and also it helps me with math and knowing more of my topics. Precision machining is a difficult topic to, sorry, um, <laughs> precision machining is a difficult topic to understand, and it takes a lot of work. And that's why I'm able to be given the opportunity that I, that I have to be able to learn this. Precision machining is something that, honestly, I never thought I would ever be able to do. I never thought of myself to be able to be part of a community or a group that would be able to give me a future that I wish I always had. Precision machining has always never been a topic that I really thought I would go into in the future. But as I realize now, I realize it is good for my career and my future and my path. It's going to give me many opportunities in the career field, and it's going to help me become, <laughs> become a precision machinist. I'm going to learn different things and meet new people. I am very excited for that path in the future. It's a really difficult thing to understand, but something that I feel like I enjoy. I really love difficult topics and knowing different things of, of like of situations. It's really fun for me to um, be put like somewhat under pressure of learning a topic and not understanding what to do and figure it out on my own. It um, it's frustrating at some point, but eventually you figure out how to overcome it. I am so grateful that I am able to do precision machining and able to have the job in precision machining. I, after, after the program and all that stuff, I work on Saturdays and I work with Mr. Dunn and different people in the E-team, which they are also able to have this opportunity as well. They are much older than us. Um, we are teenagers, they're the adults, and they come in on Saturdays, Sundays, Mondays, and they learn different, the same things we're learning. And they learn it from, they learn it in like six months basically, which honestly is very difficult, honestly. Um, the people who have graduated and moved on have been able to get really successful jobs. Um, others have gotten to go to Maine and work for like ships and build different things. Others I went to GE and um, different areas in Lynn or outside of Lynn. It doesn't really have one specific place you can go to. It has many. Um, you are able to basically, you're able to um, find different things and different people there as well. It doesn't have one specific group of people. It has many. I am very grateful that I'm able to learn about this topic and even though it's frustrating and even though it has its challenges, I'm very grateful that I'm able to learn this and I will be able to have a job in the future that I'm able to, um, that they're able to give me a job in the future. Um, I am grateful that I have a job in the crib where I work as well. I use it as an internship for when I decide to go get a job in Maine or a job in GE as well. This, this subject is really great for me and I'm very happy to have it and learn about it more in the future. Thank you. Uh, remarks from our Secretary of Education, Dr. Patrick Tuttweiler.
Thank you, Superintendent Alvarez. Wonderful to be here um, as uh, Annalise and Andy. Am I saying your name correctly? Uh, we're speaking. I was writing down a note to myself to share with my team to never have me speak after students. Because <laughs> you all were so incredible and inspiring and spot on. And this is what draws people like me and all of these folks that you see sitting up here out of bed every day to do work with and for you. I appreciate you and I admire you. Now I want to tell you something. It isn't frequent that I wear stickers on my suit jacket. You'll notice that there's one on there today. Do you want to hazard a guess as to what that's about? Come on now, people. I know it's late in the day and it's Monday and it's spring like outside. STEM week! Today is the first day! Yes! And uh, we started the day at uh, the Boston Children's Museum with about 75 four year olds, which was an incredible thrill, was it not, Commissioner? Uh, and we intentionally did that to really sort of bring to light the theme of STEM Week this year, which is STEM starts now. Say it with me STEM starts now. And by that we mean signaling to our youngest learners, the four-year-olds with their beautiful, shining faces and bounding energy, that, that what they're doing, that developmental, developmentally appropriate play, has STEM concepts built right into it. They're learning, they're like little scientists already. We wanna sort of channel that. And then for our adult learners, making sure that they know that there are pathways to all of these incredible STEM opportunities that exist in Massachusetts right now. So STEM starts now. I see people mouthing it, and I'll take that. Uh, it is the theme, and we're really, really excited about uh, that and kicking it off uh, today at the Boston Children's Museum, and now here with you uh, and Lynn, which is personally uh, meaningful. Uh, this is an incredible school, an incredible district. Uh, I want to thank you, Superintendent Alvarez, for uh, the welcome today, Mr. Mayor. Uh, great to be back with you. Uh, Mr. Principal Gallo, uh, appreciate all the work that you're doing here. Uh, it's wonderful, wonderful to be back and super meaningful uh, to launch this week here. Um, as a, an, an important part of our efforts to connect the STEM uh, is through partnerships uh, between career tech ed schools uh, and comprehensive high schools, uh, which is why I am pleased to be here today to announce that the Healy Driscoll administration is awarding $1.7 million in career and tech ed partnership grants to six schools and districts, including Lynn. Really excited about that. To your point, Mr. Mayor, about uh, doing all that you can to make sure that this opportunity is available to as many students as possible, the state remains a close partner in that effort. Through this funding, we are adding 342 new seats for students in fields that are in high demand. Here in Lynn, that, uh, at Lynn Tech, uh, you will be able to add 48 new seats to your After Dark program. Uh, that's more students learning about advanced manufacturing, uh, Annalisa, HVAC, metal fab and joining technologies, and health assisting. And on that note, related to the After Dark program, which I'm really, really excited about the opportunities that it provides, there are people behind those programs that make them work. And I just want to shout out Shannon Gardner, who I know has leaned into, no, I can't shout you out. <laughs> Okay, well, it's well deserved. Well, well, all right then. Well, congratulations, and we appreciate you for all your work in making this opportunity available for so many students right here in Lynn. So, we've been at this for the past 20 months or so, and the administration has been working hard during that time to reimagine high school. Reimagining high school relates directly to the future growth of our science, technology, and engineering clean energy and mathematics workforce, which all centers on attracting students and creating a pathway for them to continue toward these high demand sectors and having an incredible impact on the world around them. An important part of reimagining our high school initiative is providing students with engaging, 
hands-on experiences that mirror their future careers, much as you said, Andy, really appreciate your comments. Uh, we're excited that we're able to uh, expand this opportunity to more and more communities. This funding is also touching Gloucester, Fitchburg, Methuen, Salem, Beverly, Lawrence, and local, other local communities uh, who are, have a deep interest in expanding this type of opportunity, this type, type of learning uh, for their students. Uh, inspiring the next generation of STEM leaders starts in the classroom. And in Massachusetts, we are thrilled to have a wealth of pathway programs from After Dark to Innovation Career Pathways to programs like this one right here, Career Tech Ed Schools. Um, we are thrilled, uh, again, to launch this STEM week, really sort of lifting up all the opportunities and the excitement around this incredible uh, career path. And I want to congratulate all the recipients, including Lynn Tech, uh, for this new opportunity to uh, allow for more students to engage. Thank you so much for having me here. And I think we're going to do a picture now, are we not? Yes. Yes. Oh. Everybody yes. Us. <laughs> it's always yes. You know that. OK, yes. All right. Congratulations, all, and happy STEM week. We'd like to have everybody come up with you. No, you, you, you direct us. All right. Tell us what to do. You do it so well. STEM starts now. Wait, when does it start? <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes, please. Two minutes. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.